Okay, so in this video, I'd like to address some of the, the common problems that we have trying to get uh, started up here with this. Uh, I, I mentioned one of them already that you, in a previous video that you could potentially not have a home directory. And that's, that's what's happening if you did the PWD in the last video and received only a slash as a response. It indicates that you're, you were dropped upon login, you were dropped into the root directory, not your own home directory, right? So you should see a numbered directory or a number at the end of uh, the listing that you receive from PWD after you're logged in. Um, we have three other potential problems. That particular problem I can't solve. So that has, to, that has to be solved from the system administrator. Um, so that's a, an email to consult at udell.edu. I mentioned that in the previous video. So hopefully you can get started on fixing that one if that's your problem, if that's the problem that you're experiencing. Um, another potential problem is that there is no public underscore HTML um, directory. Uh, that we can address. And it's also possible that that directory doesn't have the correct permissions set on it. So we can address that, uh, and I will in this video. And finally, the last potential problem that we can have that I, you know, we've had in, in numerous, numerous classes before, um, is that the, your home directory, the number directory, can actually have the wrong permissions on it as well and um, will cause us problems. So we're gonna, in this video, we're gonna check the, th the three problems other than <laughs> uh, the root problem. The, the best we can do with the root problem is uh, email consult at udell.edu. Uh, the other three we'll work on right now. Okay, so here I am, I just finished logging in. I typed in my user, using Putty, I um, uh, requested to open a connection in Putty with copeland.udel.edu. Uh, once that connection started, uh, I was asked for my username and password. I entered those. Remember, the password doesn't show when you're typing it. You just go ahead and type it. It is going in there. And then I got logged in all the way, and I just... I was messing around a little bit, so I, I just pushed enter a number of times. And I just keep seeing my command prompt show up. And now my command prompt shows bash. I hope yours does now as well. In a previous video uh, entitled something like changing your default login shell, right? Where we changed to, uh, was it bin bash, I believe, on the network page of UD. So that usually takes overnight for that to happen. So maybe that you're just not seeing it yet because it hasn't been sitting long enough, or maybe you still need to go back and look at that video to see how to change this to bash. Uh, there's something that we'll be using in here that, that's useful. So you'll appreciate it if it's there, if it's like this. Uh, so let's first start with this L, uh, ls. So ls is a command that lists the contents of the current directory, which we'll call the present working directory, the PWD. Let's just look at PWD real quick. So I typed in PWD and then I hit enter and then you see that path to um, the number here, right? So that's my number, my home directory. This is a, a, a path to my home directory. It starts at root home, user A, 17, and then my home directory number. So those of you who had the root problem, you only got that first slash mark there. The rest of the path did, doesn't exist or didn't exist. So that's what you were fixing by uh, consult at udell.edu. So I can see my home directory there. This is a directory in, in Unix. It's like a folder in Windows. So my present folder that I'm about to look in here when I do an ls is the folder called 06127, right? 
this was provided by the system when it was set up. Uh, we, we didn't create that folder ourselves. Just like in Windows, there would be a new user folder. That folder gets generated by whoever makes the account for you, another account. Now, automatically, upon in Windows, automatically upon creation of another account, a number of folders are created. Uh, in Windows, that would be my documents, uh, my music, and others, right? You, you get the idea with that. So one of the folders that gets created for us when our home directory is created is one called public underscore HTML. So we want to see, well, what's in this folder, this numbered folder here, 06127? What are the contents of this? In Windows, you would double click a folder and you would be able to see what the contents are, right? In Unix, we'll type ls, list, list the contents of the PWD, enter. Now, I have a number of things in my directory because it's not brand new. Uh, but one, the, the important one that's been here ever since I've had this directory, ever since I've had this, which has been a long time now, it's probably 20 years, 20 years ago, this directory was created for me, <laughs> public underscore HTML. Now, something to note with Unix is that it is case sensitive. So we want to be very careful to use the correct case and uh, misspelling will cause a problem as well. All right, so you would like to, see, uh, we're hoping that there's a, a directory. This turns out this is a folder. I know you can't tell right now. And we're going to know a lot more about this system as we move forward. So I'm just giving you a very brief, just what we need to check these permissions uh, introduction. So we know what we do. We know, we kind of know what uh, LS does and we know what PWD does. Uh, and what they stand for. LS stands for list, the contents of the PWD, and PWD stands for the present working directory. So we see the contents of the PWD. I have all of these things in. You'll probably, I hope you have public underscore HTML, and you may have something called mail. Uh, maybe they've done away with that. I'm not sure. I don't see it in my file system anymore, so maybe the system got rid of that since we don't use uh, Copeland for mail anymore. It's, it's uh, Google Mail, right? So I see that public underscore HTML exists in my, in my directory. If you do, if it does not exist in your directory, in your numbered directory there, then we need to create it. So in Windows, we would do a right click new folder, right? This is a folder, I know you can't tell right now. We'll learn more about that. But it is a folder, take my word for it. Uh, so we need to know a command in Unix that will create a, a folder, or in Unix it's called a directory, right? So what we want to do is make a new directory. MKDIR is the command. So when you're typing in commands in Unix, you only need to know a couple of these commands, but you do the command and then a space, and then what it is you're trying to do here. So I make a directory, then I have to tell the system the name of the directory that I want to create. In Windows, by default, it just creates a folder called new folder right and then leaves it blinking there for you to change the, the name on the folder um, here right when we create the folder we're going to tell it the name at the same time so i would type in public underscore html oops ml notice how i was able to use my backspace there notice how there's no spaces and they're all lowercase, P-U-B-L-I-C underscore H-T-M-L. We don't want to use spaces in file names. Spaces are used um, like here as a delimiter so that I can tell the difference between where the command ends and where the name of the file begins that that's indicated by the fact that there's a space that exists there. If I put an actual space here rather than an underscore, then I would be making two directories, one called public and one called HTML. That's possible. Or I'd be making one called public space HTML that's now going to be difficult to work with because of the space. So suffice to say, 
We don't want to use spaces when we name things. So one way to do it is an underscore. Another way to do it would be camel case, which we'll talk about as we move forward. Apache, our web server, expects this folder to be here and it expects it to be named public underscore HTML all lowercase. So we're going to give it what it wants. All right, so MKDIR space public HTML, enter. Now I'm going to get an error because it already exists. Uh, the same thing would happen in Windows or Mac, right? If you are in a folder that contains a folder named My Resumes, and you try to create another folder called My Resumes, you're going to have a problem. So this is no different. It's just that you don't have the icon. That's, that's what's different. So and if you notice, if you look at my, um, my error message there, public underscore HTML file exists. It says file exists right here. So it's telling me that I'm trying to create a file that already exists or folder. Everything's a file in Unix really, but whatever, some are, I'm not going to get into a technical detail like that. Okay, so now hopefully when you do an LS, if this all worked out, then you will now see public underscore HTML there because you've created a new directory. Now we want to we want to see the, the permissions that are on that directory. So we'll do ls space negative l. So what we're asking for here is a long listing. The negative l is an option that gives us the long listing or a more detailed listing of the contents of the PWD. I just hit enter. And now I can see over here on the left, all of these permit, these are permissions. It's re, there's, there are groups of three, except the first, plus the first one here, the one leftmost one tells us if, if we're looking at a directory or a file. So those are different things, right? Just like they are in Windows, you have folders and files in Windows that are different. You can't open up a folder in Word, for instance, because a folder is not a document that can be editable. So what, the way I can see whether this is a file or a folder, or a file or a directory, I should use the correct name there, is if it's prefaced here with a D, that D right there. And so we'll see that on public my public HTML, it's right here, it starts right here with a D indicating that this is a directory. If there's not a D, like a, a, a space like that, a, a dash, then that means it's a file. It's not a directory, it's a file. It has to be one or the other. All right? And then the rest, what we see here, are three groups of three letters. All right? So uh, these indicate read, write, and execute. So there's one group of three letters. We'll go into this much in much more detail uh, as we move forward. It's really not as, as difficult as it may seem at the moment. Read, write, execute. So there's three groups of those. Read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. What you want to have is just what I have. If, if your public underscore HTML folder has the same permissions as mine, that's RWX, R space X, R space X, or dash, then your permissions are set properly. If not, then what we want to do is change the permissions. So we'll do that with a command called chmod, chmod space, that's the command portion. Now we want to tell it um, what we're going to do here, what we want to change. followed by the permissions that we want to, to have set here. And we're going to use 755 space the file or folder that we're trying to set these permissions on. And in this case, it's public, P-U-B-L-I-C underscore H-T-M-L. So the command chmod initiates or lets the operating system know we're trying to change the permissions of a file or folder. So chmod is going to want two things. It's going to need to know 
well, what do you want the permissions to be? And what's the file or folder that you're, that you're going to change? All right? So there's three things. Each of those three parameters uh, are separated by a space. Right? So because we need a space to delimit something. If we just wrote it all at one, it looks like as one thing. It, it, it seems like it's just one thing. Now, if we wrote chmod space 755 space public space HTML, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen there exactly without playing with it, but I'm going to take a guess and say what I suspect is it's going to, well, it's going to fail. In my case, I have a directory called public. So it might change public to 755. And then I'm going to an error, get an error message that says there is no such file as a uh, file or folder called HTML. Because what it's going to do is try to change to 755 permissions, a file or folder called public, and also one called HTML because of the space, had I done it that way. All right, you may have gotten at the end of this, so I'll hit enter, I'm going to get an error message. Oh, no, I won't either. All right, so I've just changed public underscore HTML. It already was 755. I just changed it to 755 again. So here's something to notice. Uh, notice how I didn't get an error message there. So you only get a response from Unix if you do something wrong. So it doesn't, I just changed the permissions. It doesn't reply with like, good job or anything like that. Right, it just, it just keeps on going if, if, um, if there's no problem, as you would expect. So that hopefully is not going to cause you any issues. And if it did, then it's probably that you have not, you're not using the case under uh, lowercase, or you've put spaces uh, in inappropriate areas, <laughs> places. It's C-H-M-O-D, all lowercase, space, the number seven, followed by five, followed by five, with no space between them, right? And then a space, and then the file or folder that we're trying to change, which is public HTML with no space in it. Okay, so this last thing we want to check here is a little trickier because, here we'll look at PWD again. It's the, it's the permissions on this folder that we want to check. So that is our PWD. Oh, that didn't work right. So when I do an LS negative L, LS space negative L, it's telling me, as you can see up here, the permissions of all the files and folders in my, in my PWD. The things that are inside the folder that I'm looking at, it's not telling me the permissions of the folder that I'm in, just those objects that are within the folder that I'm in. Right? It's a little, a little tough to explain, but I'll, I'll try to explain it more. Not try, we'll get it eventually. And it'll make sense. So what I'm gonna wanna do here is I need to move up a folder. So these are all folders along this list here. That's a folder. That folder called 06127 is contained in the folder called 17 right here. That folder 17 is in a folder called USRA and that's in a folder called home. So this is like a nesting of folders. And the contents of this folder is all of this stuff. So what we wanna do is back up one folder to 17 and look at the permissions of this directory right here. Right, so we can do an ls negative l and we'll see this directory. Now here's the interesting thing. So in order to go up one, cd space, dot, dot, enter. Now, when I do an ls, we're gonna see all the home directories that are in that home directory called 17. I'll even do a negative l on it. So we can see the permissions. So I typed ls space negative l, enter. 
So we'll see, we can see that there's a lot of them, right? And generally speaking, we want to avoid using the mouse, but in this case, there's so many of these. Look how many of them there are. Oh, not that many as I thought. So what we can do is look along this directory. The numbers are all over here, right? Oh, they're all on the right hand side, the rightmost side. Here they all are. Right? These are all other users on this system. It's the home directories of other users. So we're looking for the home directory, our home directory. So I'm scrolling all the way back up here so I can just look at this. Once again, I see that my directory was called 06127, 6127, 06127, that's mine. Yours is gonna be a different number. 06127, so let me look through here, 05, there'll be an order, 0613, 0612887, there's mine right there, 06127, all right, so now I'm gonna come over and look at, oh, you know, I could have found, there's my name right there. That's the owner, I'm the owner of that directory. This is what we're concerned with right here. So we want those, these permissions that are, that are listed there. So if, if yours has a problem, it would probably look like this one where all of those permissions, the, 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 the last six, two sets of three, are all dashes. So probably, or here is another one, it's root, root, they're both, they're both root, isn't that interesting? Here's one right here. So whoever this is, their web root is not, Apache's not gonna be able to read from their web root. Now, I, we can't do anything to their directory, they'd have to do it themselves. The owner of the directory, this person, would be the only person that can change these numbers. So we saw mine, one, two, seven was right here. W Boyer, yes. These are the direct, these are the permissions that you want. So that is the first three all on, read, write, execute is seven. Then we have only the X and the X. So that's one, one. So the number that we want, we're gonna use, in order to change permission, we're gonna use chmod, space, then there was a number next, right? 711, space, this number. Well, not mine, your number. So I would say chmod, 711 06 Jeez, I forgot already again. 702 or something. 1127. Yeah, I see it right there. 127. Set. Now, if I hit enter. It's going, I, I mean, I can do it, it's not a problem. Uh, I'm just not changing anything, right? Because I changed it, but I, I, I set the permissions to exactly what they already were. And, and at that point, now we just hit CD enter with nothing afterwards, right? Just CD enter. We're back in our home directory. We do a PWD and you can verify that we're back in our home directory. 06127 is my number. You guys are gonna know my home directory better than you know your own. All right, and then we'll know that when I do an LS, I'll see public HTML there. And so we know my home directory has the right permissions, public HTML has the right permissions, and um, that gives us a good place, a great place to launch our semester. And so the next video, 
Hold on a second here. So the next video, um, I'm gonna start, I'd like to start learning some some more basic commands. I, I will go over the ones that we just covered um, so we can begin to, to see how to move around in this uh, Unix system that has no icons. Uh, a few things that we do know with certainty here, uh, well, we know LS, PWD, uh, and we're getting, you know, CD, we've seen CD at least. I will cover those again as we move forward. Uh, we, most importantly, what we know is that we're not going to use spaces in things that we name, <laughs> whether it's a, a folder or a file, no spaces. We know that these objects that we're creating uh, are case sensitive. So public HTML with all lowercase is a different directory or file than public HTML with even a single capital letter anywhere in it. So capital P and then all lowercase U-B-L-I-C underscore HTML is a different name than all lowercase. So we want to be very careful with spelling, with case, and with spaces. Um, and then we'll we'll just work with uh, uh, we're going to learn a handful, maybe I don't know, maybe ten total commands in Unix will be all we really need in order to do everything that we want to do in this class. It will not make you a Unix administrator, but you know you'll be a, you, you'll be able to use the system with just about you know somewhere in the vicinity of ten. It might be a little like one or two more. It's about ten. It's about ten. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully we can have all of these permissions and folders all set up properly and the software installed and we'll be able to, we'll just move around in the Unix system a little bit on the next video. And then we're going to create our first simple web page, super simple one, just to verify that all of this is working properly. All right. So I'll catch you next time.